Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network Crisis for the Geek Kai. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join We Be Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to We Be Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at webegeeks.net. We Be Geeks, your voice for the geek revolution. Want to know more? We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind. So if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast. And, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number or, um, go to nami.org or, um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you um, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And um, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. Way. I don't care how you're doing, what's up or how's it hanging, I'd like to buy this world one last drink. Life sucks all of the time, stick it up your sunshine, and then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds every day. Then you'll see the clouds every day. Welcome to The Crazy Life, everyone. My name's Jen, and I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian. Hey, Brian. Howdy. And no hand tonight, folks. Unfortunately, he was not able to join us. But I'm sure he will be listening, and we miss you, Hanno, and can't wait to talk with you next week. Yep. Yeah, he's off doing uh, musics, so that's pretty cool. You know, that that uh, they're getting some, uh, some their record done and whatnot, so that's, that's pretty sweet. They're moving forward. Not many can say that they put together their record, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Yep. Exactly. So, very cool. 
And like you said, we'll talk to him down the, you know, next week or whenever he's able to come back. So, yippee. So. Do you want to start or would you like me to start? I can. Um, so, um, I went to a new therapist, or no, I'm sorry, a new psychiatrist this week. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was uh, via telemed. You know, so basically, like, doing it on Skype, essentially. And um, I <laughs> had to wait a while because there was a situation at her office. Then there was a, a whole, like, technical issue. They could <laughs> they could get it to where we were in the same room, essentially. But all she got was a black screen and was getting no audio. So <laughs> it was... Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty weird. So she ended up having to go into a conference room, and then we went through a different, uh, different way of doing it. So it was, you know, but once we got it sorted out, it was, um, it was pretty nice because um, I like that she did a base evaluation. She went through and asked me questions about different medicines I'm on, and you know, conditions and what have you, and then uh, uh, when I was explaining to her. I explained to her, as I have on here, about the whole uh, Taco Bell versus Wendy's situation where I didn't want to go to one just because I didn't want to be in the car longer. You know, she immediately was like, oh, yeah, she's like, sounds like you have developing agoraphobia. And I laughed and was like, no, it's well developed. But, (laughs) yeah, I'm just kidding with her. But, uh, you know, it was nice. She decided to increase my antidepressant because she, you know, didn't feel that it was doing enough. And, or I should say we felt like it, cause it wasn't like I disagreed with her. I agree with her. Um, and then she also started me or gave me something that I can take for my anxiety kind of as it comes up. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't used it yet cause I just got it today. So I haven't had a chance, um, and like she mentioned, I'm going to try to pick a time where I'm while I'm at home and my anxiety goes up to use it. That way I can kind of see how I react to it without being out in public and maybe, you know, having a reaction or something. So, yeah. But uh, I was pretty happy with that because she, you know, she told me that it's it's one that's been around for a while and stuff. And, uh, you know, that it's not. Uh, not as habit forming or not habit forming. I don't remember which she said, but uh, which was obviously a concern of mine because that's not something I want to start. So, yeah, and then I go back and I forgot how long, six weeks or three months or I don't remember what she said. <laughs> I can't remember now. But But I was pretty happy, you know, coming out of the appointment because, you know, it was time for a change. It mm-hmm. wasn't you know, like what was going on wasn't working. So it was time, time to find something else. And I also like the fact that now I have her saying agoraphobia and I have her saying, you know, and then I also have my therapist say it. Cause you know, like I said, as soon as I explained that situation to her, um, like her, her, her first words to me after that were, wow, that tells me a lot. And, you know, so it was nice that I, it helps that, um, I'm able to explain my situation, like how I feel and where I'm at, you know, so that helped her be able to quickly be able to do her job. So, you know, the only thing I hated about the evaluation was, you know, there was a part where she gives me three things to remember and then she talks for a while and then asks again, and I nailed that because literally all I do through that situation is keep repeating those three things in my brain while we're talking. And <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I, you know, it's not really as good of a test as people may think it is, but um, whatever. Uh, but then she asked me to count backwards from 70, subtracting seven every time, which you know me and Matt, like I had no trouble. I'm just boom, 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 boom down the road. <laughs> you know, it took it all the way down. And she was like, wow, that's better than, you know, most people do. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, it's kind of the way I was taught to do math anyway, was in my head. And, you know, uh, so it, it, 
you know, it kind of played into a strength of mine. But I told her, I said, I hate that because it makes it look like cognitively, like I'm like completely on top of the game. And there's a lot of days where I'm absolutely not, you know, Mm -hmm. there's so many days where I can't remember things. I have trouble just focusing on anything, you know, and it's like, but of course, every dang time I have one of these tests, that's one of those days where my brain's sharp as an ax, you know, (laughs) like, (laughs) and I'm not going to go in there and lie, you know, I'm not going to and just sit there, you know. It isn't me, so, but whatever. Anyway, it felt like a pretty good visit, though. I was really happy with uh, with it. What was funny was sitting there waiting. I was starting to get anxious. Right outside the room, they had a wave machine. Oh, really? Yeah, in that that area, they have a wave machine. So they had that on, and it was, you know, so I, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to use this because it's there, you know. So I just started focusing on the sounds and basically meditating while I was sitting there, just only focusing, visualizing waves coming in and going out, you know, like looking at the ocean and and just focusing on the sounds and whatever. And of course it helped because it's, that's the point of it is it's a soothing uh, sound and stuff, you know, and they couldn't have been nicer at the doctor's office. You know, they were apologizing like crazy and, you know, like, Oh, it shouldn't go like this. And I'm like, it's fine. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah, and it's like in my head, I'm going, you're making it worse. Like, I'm telling you it's OK, <laughs> you know, because it was like, really, that wave machine made a big difference. So I don't know if that's the reason it was there or if it's because they tend to do counseling in that area or or I, I don't know. But, um, you know, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool that it was there. It was help- very helpful. You know, I could have always pulled something up on my phone because I have different apps that have. Um, you know, sounds to help you, um, relax, but <laughs> so, um, now I went out with, uh, our friend Jeannie the other night and, uh, which is the first time I've really done much like that in a while. So, you know, that was good that I just got out and did something. You know, mm-hmm. and, and we had a good time and stuff. So we, her and I haven't hung out in a long time. So it was really nice to, to do that again. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah. And then, uh, what else have I done? Uh, I went to the grocery store today. That was fine because I called ahead and just went and picked the stuff up. Mm-hmm. So although going to the fruit and vegetable store was, I we pull in the parking lot and I look and I'm like awesome. I'm like I should be able to get in and out of here no problem. I go inside and I'm like where did all these people come from? Like <laughs> like it doesn't look that busy. But I think it's just the size of the store cuz it's a small store, you know. So it doesn't take very many people to seem busy and you know. But I was still I was able to get in and out of there pretty fast, but it was just kind of funny how I realized that at that store it doesn't, I have to remember that it's not going to take a lot of people for me to feel anxious in there. So I'm going to have to remember if I'm feeling anxious and if I look at the parking lot and it looked like it did today that, that I need to kind of prepare myself that, okay, this might be an anxious trip, even though, you know, just so that I focus on my breathing while I'm walking through the store, basically, you know, so it does help too, that at that place, it's always cool or cold. You know, it'd be different if it was like 80 degrees in there, then I probably would be like, nope, and (laughs) run out of there. (laughs) So, yeah. And, yeah, I think that's about it, though. I can't really think of much else. So, pretty okay week, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing, you know. Uh, great or whatever. And then for me, the win for the week is, you know, the, the psychiatrist visit. You know, and, and making a kind of a, you know, adjusting the plan. So, yeah. you know, realizing that it was time for an adjustment and following through on getting that taken care of. So, which, and also the fact that it's a new doctor for me, you know, mm-hmm. so the fact that I was able to not freak out while I was sitting there waiting for, I mean, I waited for, uh, it was probably about 45 minutes. 
before things got sorted out. So, you know, which I've waited way longer, as you very well know, you know, as we had to wait, what was it, like four hours for that one doctor? But, uh, yeah, it it was nice um, that I didn't freak out or anything. So, and in fact, most of the time I was sitting in there, I didn't even get my phone out. I, I was literally just really using that as a time to focus on breathing and and using that wave machine. Because remember, I mentioned before how I've been trying to off and on meditate in places I wouldn't normally meditate. And I, I found that I was like, oh, here's another great, great opportunity. So I took that instead of, I'm going to get on Twitter, you know, for the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I completely understand. And actually, that's probably a good segue into my week. Um, so a couple things that I, well, one thing I mentioned last week was, I think I mentioned it on the air. Um, I shut my notifications off on Twitter. Yeah. So for those of you who know, know me or have heard me talk, I am on Twitter quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I will go on air and say that some weeks it's been as much as eight to 10 hours a day of logging, according to my phone, logging on and spending time on social media. Right. And that's just to clarify, that's cumulative, you know, like it adds up. It's not that you're on eight to 10 hours in a row or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here, checking it, checking it, checking it adds up. Right. Um, so Regardless, it's that's a lot. Unnecessarily amount, an unnecessary <laughs> amount of spent staring at my phone. Um, so I shut off my notifications because I was having a lot of anxiety and stress about responding to people and keeping up with different conversations and things, and it was really starting to affect me. So I turned my notifications off this week and noticed a marked difference. I'm much calmer. I'm not as anxious. And so that really, it's been helping a lot. Um, so that is a good step. Yeah. I had an aha. Uh-huh, uh, somebody I was talking to mentioned that they gave up coffee. They loved coffee, but they gave up coffee. And I said, why did you give them coffee? And I've been getting very anxious lately. Mm-hmm. And I, Knew that caffeine would. Sure. I have no idea why I've never put two and two together. (laughs) Yeah, that was part of the reason I cut back on on pop. Was the same Mm -hmm. thing. I noticed if I have a lot of pop in one day, my anxiety is different. So. I would say I drink probably. I don't even know eight to 10 cup, 12 ounce cups of coffee a day <laughs> and of course it's not decaf so oh, oh no yeah. I'm always right right of course uh, so yeah um i do now so i'm starting to cut back on my coffee i can't i'm not gonna cut it out completely because i do love my coffee yeah um i've switched cups of regular in the morning and two 12 ounce cups of regular in the morning <laughs> i will clarify <laughs> And then the rest of it will be decaf, um, mm. or it would be water. So I'm making that adjustment as well. Yeah. To kind of help. Cause I just, I, well, spacing, spacing them out makes a big difference and stuff too, you know, cause if you do one cup into another cup into another cup, you're constantly, you know, like hit, hitting those rises and crashes. So if you kind of, space it out a little bit, it may not be quite as bad, you know? Yeah. And, and it should be fine. I don't necessarily expect to have too much, you know, kickback from the whole thing. Cause I'm not getting rid of caffeine completely from my system. Mm-hmm. So it should be knock on wood. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny. And, um, uh, when I, I think about it, it's like, that's pretty much a dumb, aha, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. Um, it's, well documented. I know I've heard it multiple times before. Mm-hmm. That can be so good for anxiety. So this should not have been a surprise to me. But 
somehow it was. So, you know, no matter how much we read, no matter how much we think we know, there's always things that you either forget or overlook or don't think of. So in that way, so yeah. that's why we have, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's why it's always good to try to learn yeah. and keep, keep your mind open. So, <clears throat> So those are two things that I've been working on this week that have been going very well. I'm really surprised yeah. the doctor didn't ask you about that because she's actually the reason that I stopped or cut back on, on pop because she mentioned it to me. So I'm surprised that she didn't mention it to you. That's funny. And it, and it could have. Again, mm-hmm. it's been many years since we've had that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been on the same. I've been doing really well. So we really haven't delved into, you know, things that could be causing issues because things have been going so well um, for the most part. So I think that's probably it that, you know, she probably did mention it to me at some point. Yeah, and it could be. I either hear it or it didn't stick, obviously. Um, but so yeah, so that's what I was working on. And then this weekend was my dad's birthday. Mm-hmm. And so, um, my brother came into town, uh, which is awesome. And of course, I love my brother and I love to spend time with him. But, you know, still it's being social and, and you know, socializing for a lot, yeah. um, a lot of time. And then um, on Saturday, I had a friend of mine's one-year-old son's birthday party to go to. Mm. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> When you don't have kids, or even when you do have kids, birthday parties for young children pose a lot of pitfalls. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and it's not for lack of love. You know, I I love my friends. I love their son. Just a wonderful child. You know, he is a very sweet, sweet little boy. But being at somebody's house for three to four hours with not a whole lot of stimulation other than talking to people you don't know, mm-hmm. it's not easy. Yeah. And if you're prone to social anxiety as I am, it takes a whole new level of, let's be honest, a whole new level of hell. I yeah, mean, it, it really does. Yeah. That's it, honestly, it's part of the reason why I don't go to those. So in it's, they did really well. I mean, they did have beer and they had alcohol in the basement. You could help yourself if you wanted anything. Yeah. But it didn't feel, I mean, it was, it was like noon, <laughs> noon to four. Yeah. I didn't a drinking at a baby's birthday party. And I also didn't feel comfortable drinking at that time of day. Yeah. So I partake and. It's funny because the first part of that is the reason where I would be like, I don't know. It's like drinking at the kid's birthday party feels weird to me, you know? So. But, you know, it, so it, it was what it was. And, and yeah. I made it through. You know, and I enjoyed myself to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was glad to go, though. I was ready. Yeah. So, you know, and then we went from there to dinner with my, take my dad out to dinner, um, which was also very nice. But it's just, it's just a lot of social form for me yeah so on sunday i was ready to just hibernate and that's pretty much what i did um so i did my chores and did my cooking and just kind of chilled at the house didn't even take a shower i would just just let myself just be yeah so so yeah worked out really well had a nice relaxing weekend and kind of got myself back, back in my mindset and then today was the first day with only two cups of coffee. Yeah. Um, did slip and I did put my notifications on during the day. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have because <laughs> the time I came home, I was full of anxiety again. So it just reinforces the no notifications rule um, yep. is important. Mm-hmm. So. It is uh, the thing you'll find is over time, like I'm still on my phone a lot looking at Twitter, but what you find is you're not on your phone 
all the time looking at Twitter. And you end up figuring out that most of the time you don't really miss much as far, you know, unless a room or something gets like super busy for a while and you're not in there then. Otherwise, there's so many of the rooms I've been in that I won't check it for like four hours. And then when I do, I'm like, oh, I missed two comments. You know, like, <laughs> whereas if I had had notifications on, I would have been checking anyway because I would have been looking at other, you know, because I would have been getting other notifications. So I would have been like, well, I'm here. So, you know, so, yeah, I it, it's just in the it just takes a while to fully make it a new behavior, you know, and then you end up realizing, oh, I'm not missing all that much. So <laughs> it's, it's true. It's absolutely true, and that's what I found to be the case as well. So it's just, it's getting comfortable with that. Mm. So. And for those of you, I don't know if you guys, if the mic picked it up or not, but my dog was just barking in her sleep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mike picked it up or not. Yeah. Yeah. Chasing and barking in her sleep. So sure. <laughs> She's having a good dream. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope, yeah. Well, then that's about my week. You know, nothing too too crazy one way or another, but a couple things that I am working on for sure, and I will provide updates uh, as we go in the next few weeks. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very curious to, like, the, you know, the caffeine one. So, because you did this once you know, before, like, you know, you, you used to be, like, super caffeinated and as we kind of talked about last week you know and you got away from it for a while so uh you know be curious to see how you feel without it you know me and my coffee have had a long torrid affair <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm just mean more like not just the anxiety but uh energy level yeah and then another friend of mine mentioned that um he's like you're gonna feel that you're gonna have more energy and I'm like, yeah, I don't know about you. He's like, I'm telling you, you're going to have, you're not going to have the crashes. You don't realize how many crashes you're actually yeah. getting. And, and the crashes so, take a lot from you, you know, like you, I don't think most of us realize it because, well, you know, think about it this way. You know, if you're cont if you're drinking, like you were talking before, you could be drinking enough, uh, coffee, pop, whatever it is, tea, anything with caffeine in it. Um, if you're drinking enough of it, you, you, like I said, you keep riding these things. So, so it's like when you start feeling that crash, it's like, Oh, now it's time for a five hour energy or, you know, or an energy drink or a coffee or whatever you happen to be, you know, is your, your, uh, thing of choice. And, you know, so you kind of like, you know, kind of push through it because you've once again, caffeinated, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, being more even probably will make you feel better across time, you know. But, yeah. you know, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it it will. It'll be really curious. I'm curious yeah. to find out how this is going to all Yeah, because I've never been one that really gets energy from caffeine. Like, I don't, like, I don't drink a pop or a, or an energy drink and I'm like, ah, you know, and I'm like leaping off buildings or something. I'm not, you know, I don't really feel that much more up you know um i but i do notice the anxiety part of it you know mm -hmm. i do notice if i drink a lot of something caffeinated that it's like i remember when i used to drink energy drinks and i had to quit because i thought my heart was going to leap out of my chest and my anxiety was going crazy during that time of course you know so <laughs> those were great reasons to not do that for me and you know, like even now, if I, I do notice if I drink a lot of pop, I, I will have, it's more about the anxiety part of it or just heart rate, you know, because I could like feel my heart beat faster, but I don't feel like I have more energy. Like I'm still as lethargic as ever. <laughs> well, I'm pretty much the same way. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you uh, saw how much like Mountain Dew I drank in high school, you know, <laughs> and I was always like, meh. <laughs> Yeah. So tonight, I wanted I have the article tonight, and uh, this one really kind of resonated with me because mm. so often we find ourselves in situations where 
for lack of a better word, everything seems to be falling apart. Like nothing is ab- absolutely nothing is going right. Mm. If it can go wrong, it's going wrong. You know, Murphy's laws. All of these things just are piling up. Mm. Well, if everything seems to be falling apart, it's because it is. And that's the article today. And the article starts out today with um, with a statement. A bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because its trust is not in the branch, but it's in its own wings. Always believe in yourself. And that's something that, I mean, that just is huge when you stop and really think about it. You have to be able to have some level of of trust and belief in yourself. I mean, you've survived this long. So, and you've survived through ups and downs. You've survived through really bad stuff as well as really good stuff. So you've proven it time and time again that you can make it through. So you got to learn to be able to believe and trust. Uh, So if you've ever stopped and thought, what the hell am I doing? Or how did I end up here? Believe me when I tell you that you are one of many, including me. Feeling lost is stressful enough. But what about when we disappoint ourselves more than anyone around us? What do we do when we have no sense of direction or purpose and a dwindling confidence in ourselves? I haven't yet figured it all out, but that's just fine. That's the point exactly, that we don't have to figure it all out right now. You can be hurting and healing at the same time. They are not mutually exclusive. That's a great one too right there. You can be hurting and healing at the same time. (laughs) So, so often we feel like... It has to be one or the other. You know, that, okay, the hurting's over, now it's the healing time. And it's like, doesn't doesn't work that way. You can have them both happening and you survive and be okay. Yeah. So I find myself in what would be one of the darkest moments of my life at the ripe age of 25. My girlfriend of five years and I split up as I was planning to propose an F4 tornado destroyed my hometown and I quit a successful job in an advertising and all in a matter of months. Hmm. The truth is, I wasn't happy in my relationship, even though I told myself I was over the years and through my myriad of fights. I wasn't truly happy in my career and I was missing a lot in life in general. So I took a hard look at myself. 25, single, jobless and feeling empty. Not empty in the lonely sense of the word, Empty in that I would wake up in the middle of the night and not see her next to me. Hmm. Empty in that all my peers were on life's highway, setting goals for themselves, breaking them, and setting new ones thereafter. Every opportunity that I had been afforded, I took advantage of and excelled in. But I never found that one thing that fueled the fire in my heart. I don't think I ever discovered my passion. By 25, surely I must be getting close to it, right? Hmm. Well, many of my friends knew exactly what they wanted to do from a young age. Deep down, I envied that. To know my purpose was what I longed for. So why was I not one of those automatically who automatically knew? I don't have, yet have that answer. But I have found two things thus far to be true. The first one, yes, some people know what they want early in life, but they are the exceptions to the rule. So, you know, I'm 41 years old now, Mm -hmm. going to be in a few months, and I still don't know what I want to do with my life. That's what I was going to say, too. Same here. You know, it's, I mean, I thought I did at one point, you know, a couple different things, actually, you know, and because I always thought I was going to be an artist. And, you know, went hardcore on that path for a while. And then that didn't turn out. And not that it couldn't, but it just, I also realized at one point that I don't know that that was really what I wanted anymore, you know. And then, you know, after that, I think after that point, I really just drifted 
Like, I just don't know what, I don't have a clue what really stokes that fire. It's, it's something I've been chasing ever since. So, yeah, I, I, I can understand. Like, I've kind of feel like I've been on both sides of it where I felt like I was very much at a very young age. I mean, when I was a little kid, I was like, I'm going to be an artist, <laughs> you know, and push that all the way until I was what, 23 roughly. And even then didn't completely give up on it. You know, still did school a few times after that at different points. And not that I'm still giving up on it, but it's just like at the age I am, it's very unlikely, you know, that it's my, you know, like a profession. But it still could be something that makes me really happy and makes gives me purpose. But I don't know that I feel that way anymore. You know, you still have. 40 to 50 years of life in front of you. No, I know. But I'm just <laughs> meaning that usually by this point, you're kind of, especially for careers in like art, unless it's like fine art and stuff, you know, youth is generally coveted. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, I mean, the thing to think about, and as he goes on, the writer goes on to say, many successful people we know today found success later in life. Stan Lee started Marvel Universe at 39. Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of species at 50. And Grandma Moses, Moses began painting at 78 years old. Mm. Then there are the countless people you've never heard of and probably never will who found meaning and passion later in life or found it, lost it, and then found it again. So I think the big point to take away from this, what he's saying is that there is no timeline. Right. No. You know, it's, it's so tough because especially when I talk to women who are in their uh, 20s, in early 30s that aren't married, that would like to have children. Yeah. And would be it's so tough because that's one of the few timelines we do have in our lives because as we all know, women can only have children up to a certain age. Hmm. there is that booming to a certain extent so I get it and I get the pressures that are behind all of that but other than that I mean but do you really want to be in a situation where you're you're settling for something because you think you want because of something you think you want yeah you know, don't don't settle or try different things. Try a bunch of different things until you find the right situation and the right yeah. thing that you want. I think that's a problem like a lot of people run into in college. You know, like yeah. they, they go to college, they don't necessarily know what they want to major in. And they feel like they're a failure because they don't just have a clear path or something. And it's like... You know, it's like, so pick a few things. You know, jump around on it. Or worst case scenario... Just go get a basic business degree, you know, mm -hmm. and then what? take all the electives you want to take. And then maybe along that way, you'll stumble into something that, you know, really does kind of give you more of what you want to do or something, you know. And very few people can say that their passion is their career. Right. I mean, you have that luxury. You hit the lottery, you know, yeah. kudos to you. I think that's amazing. If you can really, if you can find a passion and have that, make a career out of it, that's amazing. Yeah. But more often than not, your career and your passion will be two different things. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And here's the number two. So number one, most people don't know what they want early in life. Number two, maybe we were meant to do more than one thing. Here's the thing, folks. Just because, and you ask anybody who has their, their degree, you set out with your mind set that this is going to be my career path. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to accomplish. This is what I'm setting out. This is, these are my goals. More often than not, things are not going to go the way you want it to go. Yeah. I've 
my degree is in human resources. I have a bachelor's of business administration, major human resources, minor in business law. I have not done one day's work as an HR person or as anything to do with business law. Yeah. That's what I had my heart set on. That's what I was going to do. I ended up going into logistics. I gave me customer service. I did some recruiting. I touched on a variety of different things in all because I had kept an open mind and I didn't didn't fixate on that one thing. Yeah. And I kind of your path just kind of went a little bit all over the place. I'm very happy with the way things went. Um, yeah, there's some pitfalls. There's some things that I could have done better and decisions that I probably would have made differently given hindsight. But for the most part, I'm really happy with where I'm at. And I found that all of these different things that I have done over the years have made me better prepared for what I'm even doing now. You know, I mm -hmm. just, for instance, last week, I had a really bad conversation with one of our vendors. Uh, the vendor was bullying me over the phone and was arguing with me and just basically giving me a horribly hard time. And according to people who heard the conversation, I handled it beautifully. Mm -hmm. The only way I could handle it with the decorum and professionality that I did was because of my experience in customer service. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have been prepared for that type of phone call otherwise, but I spent eight years in customer service and dealt with so many different situations that this guy couldn't phase me. Mm -hmm. Everything he threw at me, I just dodged and weaved and did my thing and got us back on track. So it's just, that's the beauty of having so many different things under your belt. So, as the article goes, it's our understanding of success that helps us define when we've reached it. Rather than think of success as one destination, we can choose to see it as the car ride from spot to spot, each equally exciting. So how do you recover when you feel as though life took you, chewed you up, and spit you back out? Well, you don't. At least not really. I stumbled upon a great quote a few days ago that read, when people say recovery, you typically think of returning to how you were before, but there's no going back. You do not merely recover, but reinvent yourself. You become something completely different from what you were before. Hmm. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. Yep, because it's right, because it, that really is the way you see recovery, no matter what it is. If you look at an athlete, you know, a baseball pitcher that threw 95, hurt his elbow, you know, has surgery, blah, blah, blah. The the look for recovery is, can he get back to 95? Mm -hmm. You know, or, or maybe more, because there are some times where after surgeries, you know, guys do gain a couple of uh, miles an hour. But, um, you know, if all you can get back to is 90, they're going to go, ooh, the, you know, the recovery fell short, basically. They're not going to see it. You know, although, like you said, there are a lot of baseball pitchers that have had that issue. They they throw high high velocity, hurt themselves, and then learn how to throw off speed pitches or different pitches, and just get smarter with the way they pitch. And then they're able to. There was uh, one guy a few years ago. God, I can't think of the guy's name. That basically looked like he was about done because he was losing speed on his fastball. Learned how to throw a knuckleball. And ended up getting probably, I think, like three or four or five more years out of his career because he was throwing an effective knuckleball, you know. So yeah. like that, he just adapted. Even So his recovery basically was him going, okay, I can't be that, so now I'm this, you know, and, and, and was still very successful, you know, got a big contract with another team after that. So you could look at it and go, well, did he ever get back to 95? No. but he was able to still pitch for five or so more years, which he shouldn't have been able to do like, or wouldn't have been able to do had he not adapted. You know, if he had just, oh, I'm going to just be this guy. You can't be a major league baseball pitcher whose best stuff is only in the eighties. 
you know, like you're going to get crushed left and right. They'll hit you all day long. So, you know, like I said, he found a pitch they couldn't hit. So then he got, you know, more years on his career. So that's really kind of what, what it comes down to is sometimes you can't get back to the high velocity fastball. So you have to realize that, Hey, but I can do this. You know, Michael Jordan, end of his career, didn't drive to the hoop as much. He started taking more fadeaway jumpers because he realized that there are, you know, you can't guard him when he starts doing fadeaway jumpers. So it's, you know, he had changed his game so he could get more years out of his bad knees, you know? Exactly. Uh, as the article put, many times we take a step back from situations to recover, when in fact we may need to do is reinvent ourselves if we can no longer return to what we used to be. Mm-hmm. It's not a negative thing to reinvent who you are. In yeah. fact, it's one of the most liberating experiences you will ever have. You just have to let yourself. Yeah. If you're anything like me, you're your own biggest critic. And although this can help keep a keep, and although this can help us keep ourselves accountable, it can prevent us from broadening our horizons. We internally set limits for ourselves based on past experiences, thinking that we can only go as far as we've already been. When you learn to let go of the things that no longer serve your purpose, but only hinder you, then you can truly soar. Let yourself gain new talents and explore new things outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes it's important to let go of the oars and simply float the river. So often we try to paddle upstream when in reality we'd be better off letting the river guide us downstream <laughs> to where we haven't been before. Have uh, you ever tried to stay still on a river without using a an anchor? No. I mean, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. Yeah. Cause, cause, yeah. You know? Sure. You can try, you can paddle, you know, one way and then paddle another way, paddle against the current or have one or going one way, the other or going the other way to kind of keep you stationary. Yeah. And work for just the, you know, few minutes, you could probably make it happen. But for the most part, you're just, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. It's like standing in life. You you can't, you just, yeah. life is going and carry you with it whether you like it or not yeah so only choice you have is to either adjust with the situation or deal with the consequences which you may not like yeah you know? and that's really what you have to do so it, it's interesting when you stop and you really kind of take a look at all the different um all the different things that that you can say what ifs on, but then also have to take a look at all that stuff that you said I did on, and I did get this accomplished. And what if I can do more? Mm. It's just it really opens up the world to you. Yeah. Well, it's tough. I think a lot of it too is when it makes it when he made that comment about um, just getting back to what we know or whatever, because it makes sense, right? Well, it's hard to visualize something you've never experienced, you know? And, and that's the thing is we're taught through different stuff, you know, like, you know, once you've done something, you can picture yourself doing it over and over and over kind of a thing. And, you know, if you haven't done it before, it's much, much harder to visualize it because you haven't actually seen that result. So, you know, it it is a kind of a weird place for us to put ourselves into. Um, And I would imagine, you know, and probably not very easy, you know, like it's hard to, you know, visualize making a jump shot if you've never made a jump shot, (laughs) you know, like even if you've watched basketball, you still may not be able to visualize yourself hitting that shot, you know, because you can't, you can't have that first person uh, account of it. So, but you know, that still shouldn't stop you from trying the stuff. And I think that's kind of what he's getting at too, is it's very much a, you know, uh, you know, that's how you grow is to push into territory that you haven't, you know, done before or something that does interest you that, you know, maybe it's scary or whatever, but 
you know, was it, uh, we've talked a couple times that, that line, that's the, you know, don't be afraid to suck at something new, you know, <laughs> cause you're going to, that's how it works. You know, think very, about, you know, people, yeah. Very few people have ever died from fear. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. There's you probably know, quite a few that have, but <laughs> you no, know, strictly from fear itself. Yeah, I mean it, it because the fear causes like a heart attack or something, you know. But you don't. It's not like you know. Yeah. Like car accidents and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. It's not you don't hear of in the newspaper so and so died of right. fear. No, because it's usually the it'd be the catalyst for something else. But it could be, you know, panic attacks and different stuff can be pretty severe for people. And, you know, but I know what you're getting at is it's like it's more of like just the fear of doing something is generally not what it would be. Like if you're falling free falling like out of a helicopter toward the ground, you might die before you hit the ground because you might have a heart attack before because you're afraid of, you know, what's going to happen. But as far as like just sitting at home. You know, like thinking about going to do a painting class or something. Generally, you're not gonna, you know, die from the fear of that. So, yeah. So think back to every missed opportunity that you were disappointed with. Many, if not all, of those so-called missed opportunities were actually guideposts. Even the accomplishments that didn't last served their purpose. They were not meant to last. They were only meant to change you. What if I would have gotten married? I would never have had the opportunity I have right now to move away to Colorado and explore New Horizons. What if their tornado would have hit my hometown? I used this as a chance to rebuild my home from the ground up when I wanted to remodel it anyway. And if I had stayed in the security of advertising, sure things would have been financially stable. But instead, I chose to fin finally pursue my passion for teaching. So yes, every single experience in life is an opportunity for growth whether it lasts forever or not. I had a baseball coach in high school who would always say, we learn more from the games we lose than the ones we win. Yeah. I carry it with me to this day. Maybe it's because we analyze more when we lose. Maybe it's because it forces us to change, to change our game plan for the next time. Mm -hmm. But trust time. You're starting from experience, not from zero. So trust when everything seems to be falling apart, new things are coming together. Yeah. But you have to be open to embrace and simply float the river. The point of life is not the destination, it's in the journey. But we're led to believe that life is serious and that must be leading us to some grand destination. Mm -hmm. I found that life is more than No dancer points to a spot on the dance floor and that's where I must end up at. The whole point of the dance is to dance. Wrapping it up, he leaves us with three things that he's found that helped him on his journey, which none of these are too much of shockers because we've talked about them before, but always worth good repeating. Name three good things about your day. Always, always a good thing. And yeah. if you have a family highly recommend encouraging your children to do this at the dinner table. You know, you're all sitting around the dinner table, have them mention at least one good thing that they went through and that had happened that day. You'll get to know your children better and you get to know your spouse better, but you also can help them re refocus their minds to the good things and not get stuck on the bad stuff that happens. Mm. Uh, number two, exercise and eat healthy. How you feel is tied, tied, tied closely to the food you consume. Make it a point to eat healthier and to exercise. This will not only improve your mood, but also your self-confidence and overall health. Always true. Yeah. And journaling. Although life is about the journey, have a sense of direction can anchor us when we're feeling lost. You write down what you want out of your next relationship, out of life, etc. Jot down your thoughts, fears, and feelings as you sit with uncertainty and find a way forward. Journaling is cathartic and can help ease much of the pain. 
It also can help you feel a sense of progress. One of my favorite things to do is look back at old entries, which can help me see how far I've come. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that because I've said that about listening to early episodes of this versus where we are now. You know, I can kind of see the change in that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can, you can hear it in our voices. You can, yeah. you know, not, we're just, we're, we've grown. We're different people than we were. Right. So that is our article and our subject for the evening. So with that, I don't know. What do you think, Brian? We good? Yeah, I think so. All right. Short and sweet tonight, folks. So <laughs> I know you have some thoughts out there, and I know you have some different things you'd like to discuss with us. So you know what to do. We want to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. Please let us know you're out there. You can reach us at the Crazy Life Podcast at... I can't even talk. You can reach us at the crazy life podcast.weebly.com is our website. The crazy life podcast at outlook.com is our email address. You can reach me direct at Witsky Dits on Twitter. That's W H I T S K E Y D I T Z. If you'd like to hear more from me, you can hear me on Shake the Sheets, which is a pop culture pop talk podcast I do with my co host, Nate. Um, and you can find that on most podcast platforms. And Heno, you can find Heno on Facebook at Heno Heiter. You can find him at Twitter at Ida Heno or what's his name now? It's L Hummingbird or Hummingbird, L. I mean. L Hummingbird. Yeah. There you go. Mm. And you can also him on moving the needle yep which can be found on twitter at mtn pod and how can i find you brian you can find me on twitter at stunami you can find my other podcast at salty underscore language or at salty and that show is not safe for work so uh you know your bud's in <laughs> um <laughs> you can also find this show on twitter at the crazy life pod and you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, we're part of the Danger Entertainment Network, which can be found at dangerentertainment.net. And the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go check out those two. Uh, there's links in the show notes if you need them. Um, and also, you know, as usual, I'll say please reach out. You know, if you feel as though you need help, please seek out that help. There's all sorts of people out there willing to help you. You just need to ask for it. Uh, and also, you know, please reach out to your friends. Make sure they're doing okay. Just let them know you care and that you're, you know, just check out. And then, you know, of course, uh, you know, when you can, please practice kindness. Um, you know, there's whole bunch of mean mean stuff going around so let's let's try to rise above if you will <laughs> and just practice kindness whenever you can you know and that includes to yourself you know make sure you're being kind to yourself absolutely and with that folks go out there and have the best week you possibly can have and don't forget wiggle your toes <laughs>